Hello everyone, I hope you are fit and fine. Today in this video session, we are going to discuss about a very interesting epic, The Fall of Troy. The Fall of Troy is an epic which was written by Greek poet Homer. Homer he is a blind poet who lived around 900 BC. He wandered from one Greek city or village to another, spreading his tales to the masses. This is a very famous kind of the epic and of course the story is also interesting. So without wasting the time, let's see the background of this story. This is the part first of the fall of Troy. The part first is started like this. Epics are long poems that relate the deeds of a great national hero or a great national war. So basically here we have two things. First is national hero. It means this is related with a great national hero. And this is the story of national war as well. Epics, such kind of the long poems were written by the famous poets and of course these are the deeds of a great national hero or great national war. They often tell of a nation's early history. So this is all about the earliest stage of the history of any one of the nation. They may be composed and sung or recited for many years before they are actually written down. So these are the stories which came in the category of oral tradition. These stories are transmitted orally and they were composed by one person or maybe so many persons at the same time. And each time you will get the updated version of the story or the poem. And these tales or these kind of the stories, they were actually related with the earlier history of that particular nation. The two famous Sanskrit epics are the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. And the two great epics of European literature written in ancient Greek are the Iliad and the Odyssey. Just as in Indian literature, we go back to the stories from the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. So, in the literature of Western countries, they go, they go back to the Iliad and the Odyssey. So, the Iliad and the Odyssey, these are the epics which were so famous in Western countries. Like in our nation, we have so many epics like Ramayana is there, Mahabharata is there and the tales of Ramayana and Mahabharata, these are the tales which are so popular among the crowds, popular among the masses. In the same way, the western countries, they are, they are all the time listening the stories of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Just as children all over India know the names of stories of Ram and Sita, Yudhishthira and Arjuna and Draupadi. So children in western countries know the names of Hector and Odysseus and Achilles and the Helen of Troy, the most beautiful woman in the world, because of whom the Greek and Trojans fought for 10 long years. So, जिस तरह से हमारे tradition में हमारी stories हैं, हमारी epics हैं, उसी तरह से western countries में उनके अपने epics हैं. बच्चे जिस तरह से हमारे country में epics सुन 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 के बड़े होते हैं, उसी तरह से western country में जो बच्चे हैं, वो Odyssey, Iliad और Odyssey को सुन सुन के बड़े होते हैं. And they were well known about the characters of the famous epics. Like जैसे हमें राम और सीता के बारे में पता है, 
युधिष्ठरा और अर्जुना के बारे में पता है उसी तरह से वेस्टर्न कंट्री के जो बच्चे हैं उन्हें भी उनके जो एपिक है ओडिसी एंड द एलियट तो उसमें से जो कैरेक्टर्स हैं हेक्टर इज द ओडिशियस इज द एकेलिस वर द एंड हेलन ऑफ ट्रॉय इज आल्सो द व्हिच वाज कंसीडर्ड एज द मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल वुमन इन द वर्ल्ड बिकॉज ऑफ होम द ग्रीक एंड द ट्रॉजन्स दे वर फाउट फॉर टेन लॉन्ग इयर्स जिसकी वजह से ये सारा जो बैटल है तो बैटल हुआ है एंड हियर नो बडी नोज फॉर सर्टन हु द ऑथर ऑफ दिस अर्ली एपिक्स इट इज थॉट दैट दे अरोज एंड डेवलप्ड विद द नेशन इट सेल्फ एंड वेर हैंडेड टाउन फ्रॉम सिंगर टू सिंगर टिल पर हैप्स वन ग्रेट पोएट गिव देम देर फाइनल फॉर्म so this is all about the development of any one of the epic this is a long heroic poem in which you will get the incidents of the national history and this is not actually certain certain means we are not actually sure about the author of this early epics because these epics they were arose arose means they were began and developed with the nation itself जैसे नेशन की हिस्ट्री जिस तरह से आगे बढ़ती है उसी तरह से ये जो एपिक्स हैं अपडेटेड होके आगे बढ़ते हैं एंड दीज एपिक्स वेर हैंडेड डाउन फ्रॉम वन सिंगर टू अनादर एंड ऑफकोर्स वन ग्रेट पोएट गिव देम देर फाइनल फॉर्म सो दिस इज द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द एपिक हियर वी हैव टोटल टू क्वेश्चन वी नीड टू डिस्कस दैट हाउ वेर एपिक्स ट्रांसमिटेड फ्रॉम generation to generation and it's very important to know that how these epics were transmitted from generation to generation so epics were transmitted from generation to generation orally as over a period of many years they were handed down from singer to singer till perhaps one great poet gave them their final form The next one is have you seen any of these stories in TV serials or movies so of course maybe you have watched ramayana and mahabharata on the television because recently in the lockdown these great epics were broad broadcasted on the national television and maybe you have you had seen the movie which was on the same plot that is troy so you can see such kind of the movies whenever you will get the time because these are the stories which are so famous and related with the national history of a particular nation so we all know it very well that orally such kind of the stories were transmitted by one person to another so in the next part it is believed that the the eliad and the odyssey were composed and recited by a blind poet named homer who lived about 900 bce so before christ in the 900 bce the poet whose name is homer who was a blind poet and it is assumed that it is believed that these two great epics were composed by this particular person whose name is homer composed means to write or create he had created these great epics he he had gave them the final touch and these are the epics which are which are on the name of homer who wandered wandered from one greek city or village to another singing his poems to all who would receive him in their homes and give give him hospitality so this person is wander from one place to another from city to city from village to village and he is singing his poems and whenever he will get the hospitality by the someone hospitality means generous reception and entertainment of the guests 
visitors or strangers wander means roaming here and there so this person is roaming here and there and he sings to spread his poems to village to village or in the cities as well this wandering singer has been honored through the ages not only greece but in all europe as the father of european poetry so this person is very famous who is famous homer who was a blind poet and he is wanted from one place to another to spread his poems and after that this person was rewarded in so many nations because he had composed the great epics called the iliad and the odyssey and he was rightly called as the father of european poetry the iliad is the story of ilium or troy a rich trading city in asia minor near the narrow sea that leads from the aegean to the black sea so this is the story of a great city which is called as troy or ilium and this is the city which was situated in asia minor near the narrow sea that leads from the aegean to the black sea aegean or black sea ko jo connect karne wali city hai that is called as troy aur is troy ke bare mein hi ye sari jo story hai wo is troy ki hai because the battle is happened at the troy so this is a rich trading city jahan se pura business chalta tha pura commerce means pura communication and whatever the businesses were there that time this all things were happened from this particular city and it was well situated it was well situated both for commerce and agriculture this is due to the place or this or the location of this city this particular city was so famous and एग्रीकल्चर भी यहाँ का बहुत फेमस था और बिजनेसेस भी बहुत फेमस थे इन फ्रंट ऑफ द सिटी वॉज द सी ओवर विच सेल द शिप्स ऑफ ट्रॉय कैरिंग गुड्स एंड ग्रेन यहाँ पर से जो शिप्स जाते थे तो उसी में से ये सारा जो बिजनेस है कॉमर्स ये सारा होता था और दे वर कैरिंग गुड्स एंड ग्रेन जहाँ से गुड्स और ग्रेन की जो एक दूसरे को जो वो ट्रेड में देते थे वो सारी चीजें यहाँ पर से होती थी एट द बैक रोज द हाई पिक ऑफ माउंट इदा फ्रॉम विच फ्लोड मेनी रिवर्स एंड स्ट्रीम्स सो सराउंडेड एरिया ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सिटी इज अल्सो फर्टाइल एंड यू कैन सी द पिक ऑफ माउंट इदा तो वहां पर से माउंट इदा जो पर्वत है तो उसका पिक पॉइंट वहां पर से दिखता था एंड वहां पर से बहुत सारी रिवर्स बहती थी बहुत सारी नदियां वहां पर से बहती थी बहुत सारे स्ट्रीम्स वहां पर से बहते थे स्ट्रीम्स मीन्स झरने तो वैलीज अमंग हिल्स वेर वेल वॉटर एंड फर्टाइल विथ कॉर्न ग्रोविंग इन फर्टाइल फील्ड्स एंड कैटल फीडिंग ऑन द रिच ग्रास ऑफ द मिडोज वाइल शिप फेड ऑन द स्लोब्स ऑफ द हिल्स ड्यू टू दी कंडीशन और एटमोसफेयर द वैलीज अमंग हिल्स वेर वेल वॉटर वहाँ पर बहुत सारा पानी था एंड वॉटर इज वन ऑफ द एसेंशियल कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द डेवलपमेंट एंड हियर ऑल द थिंग्स वेर डेवलप्ड इन गुड वे एंड द लैंड इट्स सेल्फ इज फर्टाइल विथ कॉर्न ग्रोविंग इन फर्टाइल फील्ड्स एंड कैटल्स वेर फीडिंग ऑन द रीच ग्रास ऑफ द मिडोज तो वहाँ पर से बहुत सारे जो कैटल्स थे तो वहाँ पे उनके लिए बहुत सारा जो खाना है मौजूद था एंड शिप्स वेर फेड ऑन द स्लोब्स ऑफ द हिल्स सो ऑल थिंग्स वेर ब्यूटिफुल दे वेर गोइंग इन स्मूथ वे एंड हियर वी नीड टू डिस्कस अबाउट टू इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन दैट हु आर दू आर कंसिडर्ड टू बी दी ऑथर्स ऑफ एपिक्स रामायणा एंड महाभारत रिस्पेक्टिवली सो रामायणा is written by maharshi valmiki remember the name ramayana is written by maharshi valmiki and mahabharata is written by ved vyas 
Marshu Vas. And so, of course, these are the people, those who had written these great epics. The second question here is, why is Homer honored with the title Father of European Poetry? So, it is very clear that Homer, who is a blind poet, who lived about 900 BC, wandered from one Greek city or village to another singing his poems. It is believed that the Iliad and the Odyssey were composed and recited by Homer and so he is honored through the ages, not only in Greece but in all Europe as the father of European poetry. So just now we have discussed that the atmosphere or the condition which is the symbol of development and this is the Troy which is the symbol of development. So let's see in the next paragraph the fighting went on daily but the siege did not end. So here it's very important that around their city the Trojans had built a strong wall so that no enemy should attack them from the sea. So due to the protection problem, due to the important factor that is to protect their city, these people they were called as Trojans. Trojans and they had built a strong wall so that no enemy should attack them from the sea. उन्होंने अपने सिटी के इर्द गिर्द चारों तरफ एक बहुत बड़ी स्ट्रांग वॉल क्रिएट की थी और क्यों की थी? Because this is very important factor for the protection of their people. The wall was so broad that people could stand and sit and walk on it. ये वॉल इतनी बड़ी थी कि वहाँ पर से लोग उसके ऊपर से चल चक चल सकते थे, वहाँ पे बैठ सकते थे। so it means a very big wall thi, like the China wall. The great gates stood open and people could go to the seashore outside and come in as they pleased. Vahapur se jo city ke jo main gates thai, to wo hamesha khule rehde thai. Aur is gate se hi loog andar ya bahar aaj aaj aas kar sakte thai. Aur this is very important factor but in time of war, the gates would be closed. Jab bhi kabhi unke city pe koi attack kar deeta tha, to that time these gates were closed. And then the city was like a strong fortress, quite safe from all attack, protected by the walls surrounding it as well as by his, as by the hills behind. So due to this strong fortress, to is wall ko छेदना इतना आसान नहीं था। This is very difficult and of course this particular system which was created by the people of the Troy, those people are called as Trojans। इन्होंने ये सारी सिस्टम इसलिए बनाई थी कि किसी भी अटैक में एनिमी उनके शहर के अंदर तक ना घुस सके। So due to that they had protected their city with this big wall. So here, thus the Troy was a strong city, strongly protected by its walls and strongly defended by its brave soldiers. And we all know it very well that if you like to protect your nation, you should have this strong protection system. As well as you should have the brave soldiers. कोई भी देश अपने देश को अगर बचाना चाहता है, तो उनके देश में उस देश के लिए जान देने वाले लोग होने चाहिए. So that is very important thing here. The writer explained. But all the kings and heroes of Greece had declared war against the Trojans because Paris, a prince of Troy, had persuaded Helen. Wife of a Greek king, Manolos, to elope with him. So, what was the reason of this battle? The reason is very clear. The Greece and all the kings 
which were attacked on the Troy. Why they were attacked on the Troy? Because Paris नाम का जो उनका राजकुमार था, तो उसने Helen जो कि एक ग्रीक किंग की जिसका नाम मैनुलस था उसकी पत्नी थी तो उसने उसकी पत्नी को वहां पर से वो भगा के ले गया था एंड ड्यू टू दैट ऑल द ग्रीस किंग्स दे वर यूनाइटेड एंड दे डिक्लेयर्ड वॉर अगेंस्ट द ट्रोजन्स एंड हियर वी हैव टू वर्ड्स परसुएडेड परसुएडेड मींस कन्विंस्ड ही वाज कन्विंस्ड इट मींस द प्रिंस हुज नेम इज पेरिस who convinced the Helen who was the wife of a Greek king Manolus to elope with him. Elope means she was run secretly to marry with him. He had brought her to Troy. Wo usse bhaga ke kaha pe leke aya tha? Troy me leke aya tha. And the Greeks wanted to take revenge on Troy for the wrong turn to Manolus. They sailed to Troy and laid siege to the city. So these people, they were seized the city. Seized means they surround the total town or the building and forcing them to surrender. So उन्होंने उस पूरे शहर के ऊपर attack कर दिया. उन्होंने चारों तरफ से उस शहर को घेर लिया. And of course they forced them to surrender. The Trojans too fought hard, and the siege continued for ten long years. यानी ये जो वॉर है वो कितने सालों तक चली दस सालों तक चली एंड दैट इज वेरी और यू कैन से दिस इज द लॉन्गेस्ट बैटल एवर एंड ऑफ कोर्स इन दिस बैटल सो मेनी पीपल गेव द लाइफ एंड दे वेर किल्ड बाय द एनिमिस दे वेर किल्ड बाय सो मेनी ऑदर फैक्टर्स एज वेल सो हियर ऑल्सो वी हैव टू क्वेश्चन हाउ डिड द लोकेशन ऑफ ट्रॉय help it to grow into a very rich prosperity uh, sorry prosperous city so here it's very important that how this particular city is a rich or prosperous city troy was well situated this is the first reason both for commerce and agriculture in front of the city was the sea over which sailed the ships of troy carrying goods and grain at the back rose the high peak of mount ida from which flowed many rivers and streams the valleys among the hills were well watered and fertile yahan par ka ya yahan yahan ka jo area tha wo puri tarah se developed tha pani ki koi kami nahi thi and the land was also fertile and due to that everywhere you can see the natural scenery and everywhere you can see the development and the second question here we need to discuss that is how were the trojans protected during war time so the during war time the trojans were protected by the strong walls built around the city with gates on one side and by the hills on the other so this is the system which was provided by the trojans to their city because during the war time they were protected by the strong walls built around the city and the gates on one side and by the hills on the other so this was the reason and of course here we had discussed the background of this particular story the fall of troy in the next part we will see how they fought with each other it means how the greeks and trojans trojans means the people those who were lived in troy and how exactly they fight with each other and what kind of the losses they had suffered due to this longest battle ever because this battle lasts for 10 years the salu tak ye jo battle hai wo chalta raha so here this is all about the part first of the fall of troy so here we are going to stop thank you everyone for watching my videos stay home stay safe stay tuned